Nico recovered quickly from her fever. To save time, we decided to split up and look for each stone independently. I traced the pirate catch to a remote island in the Caribbean. With the fortune he'd amassed from piracy, he'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing. The guy was studying a large document. I recognized the instrument as a theodolite, but I had no idea how to operate it. Hi, is this Ketch's Landing? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Stoborn. You're a surveyor, right, Mr... Bronson. And of course I'm a surveyor. Why the hell else would I have a theodolite? Well, I don't know. Hobby, maybe? Yeah, right. What brings you here, anyway? I'm searching for an ancient Mayan artifact. What is it? Some kind of jewel? No, it's obsidian. A black stone with supposedly mystic powers. You're nuts. What are you doing with a the theodolite? Surveying the old house. I got great plans for this place. Oh, yeah? You bet. Take a look around. What do you see? Paradise. I see opportunity. This place is ripe for development. I like it just the way it is. And that's where we differ. You see, Mr. Stobart, I'm what you might call a man of vision. I see a great future for Ketch's Landing, and it all starts here, with that house. How do you survey a house like that? I've put a target reflector on the end of one of the flagpoles up there on the house. I sight on it from various locations through the theodolite, record the angles along the baseline, and triangulate them to give me the exact position of the target. Understand? Why the end of the flagpole? Wouldn't it have been better on a... Are you a surveyor? Uh, no, my degree's in law. Then shut up. This is similar to the stone I'm looking for. What makes you think you'll find it here? Because when the stones were stolen in the 17th century... Hold it! The stones have been lost for 300 years? Approximately. And you're hoping to find them again? You're nuts. And why here? A wise old Indian shaman told me he saw the stones in a vision. Ha ha. That's rich. Listen, I got work to do, okay? Catch you later, Bronson. I just had to sneak a look at those plans. Hey, get out of there. You know, wherever I go, I hear those words. Paris, Syria, Ireland, or Spain. Makes no difference. What do you think you're doing? I was trying to show some interest in your project. You want to buy some fish? Nah, I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means... Uh... Well, it, it's just a name. Is it true that Captain Ketch lived around here? That's right. That's his house up on the hill. It's a museum now. Yeah? That's exactly what I need. Thanks, kid. You won't get inside, you know. The old ladies close it down. What do you know about Captain Ketch? Just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. No school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? Well, you know, there's a lot of competition. Who are these old ladies you mentioned? Miss Frost and Miss Mina Ketch. 
How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Branson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They quite regret it, you know. The man's a crook. Will you help me get those plans? I don't want to go nowhere near that man. He promised to draw me when he found the fish I left in his sleeping bag. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. I didn't know the first thing about sailing a dinghy. I didn't want a fishing net. A cute little putty tat. Actually, no. It was a mangy old flea bag. It was busily torturing a red ball. Hi, puss. Want to play? Hey, cat, watch where you're putting those claws. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. Is that your cat? Yes, it is. That's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Stobart? You bet. Especially spit roast. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great, 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 great grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Stobart? Yes, I am. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins, one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins' flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. You have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. But that doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ in my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh no, he got away and returned to this island, to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure, green-eyed envy. He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark and hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! Letter of mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. 
the difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk, nasty fishy boy. That will do, Mina. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, eleven, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Stobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. A large tree stood beside the house with a suggestive U formed by the branches. I couldn't think of any reason to climb the tree. The flagpole had a reflective target on the end for Bronson to use as a reference point. I couldn't reach the flagpole and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. It was a sturdy, extendable ladder. The ladder extended easily. It was an old house. You there? What are you doing? Pardon me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles. Get down! Sorry. It was locked. The house is closed. How come? It is undergoing refurbishment. Oh, of course. This must be the place Bronson's surveying. The intention is to prepare the museum for the new century. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It would look nice in neon. A museum for a pirate? There was a stony silence. As I have already told you, sir, he was not a pirate. It's precisely this sort of vile misrepresentation that Mr. Bronson is seeking to rebalance. Oh? How? Mr. Bronson has kindly agreed to undertake the museum's refurbishment at a very reasonable price. He understands the importance of a sense of history. Funny. That's not the impression I got of Bronson at all. He also understands spherical geometry. Mina? Well, he does. Listen, ma'am. I came a long way to visit this place. If we make an exception in your case, everyone will want to get in. Pardon me, but I didn't exactly have to fight my way through the crowds. You're the second visitor we've had today. No, I'm sorry, but it's impossible.
I think Bronson is trying to cheat those sweet, vulnerable old ladies. That's a little unfair, isn't it? Okay. He's trying to cheat those seriously demented, poisonous old ladies. <laughs> you have to admire his acumen. Tell me about your friend, Emily. Why are you so interested in Emily Ketch? Emily Ketch? A descendant of Captain Ketch, the pirate? Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother you? Why should it? We don't responsible for our ancestors. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Bronson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. Oh, I know all about Mr. Bronson's plans. What you got there? I didn't think the kid would be interested in that. Can I take a look at your plans? No way. What interest would they be to you, anyhow? I've always had a secret desire to be a surveyor. You have? Sure. I mean, you surveyors are just like the great explorers, aren't you? Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama, Chris Columbus. Maybe you don't sail uncharted seas or discover new continents, but you're okay in my book. Horseshit. You just stay away from those plans, you hear? Say, was that kid giving you trouble? The Fisher boy? No, he was very polite. Ha! He's a juvenile delinquent. I suppose he told you I was a crook. Yeah, he did, now you mention it. One of these days, that kid's gonna have a boating accident. Even if I have to hold his head under myself. Tell me about the two old ladies. Who? The Ketch sisters. One of them's crazy as a coot, and the other will turn you to stone if you're not careful. Catch you later, Bronson. I just had to sneak a look at those plans. Hey, get out of there. Okay. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the boy. You're really fond of that cat, aren't you? He is our companion and our solace. I thought about catnapping the little monster until they let me in, but it wasn't my style. Maybe there was some other way I could use their affection for the cat to get me into the house. 
Okay, it was time for diversionary tactics. I thought I saw a little girl down on the beach. You must be mistaken. He must be mistaken. Mustn't he, Frost? I'm sure I'm not. A little girl and that young fisher boy. What? It's not possible. Uh, what were they doing? Oh, the kinds of things that all little boys and girls get up to at their age. When I was a little girl, we used to play cows and milkmaids. Well betide you if you're lying to us, Mr. Stobart. Heaven help you. With a creak of ancient corsetry, the sisters sailed majestically over the distant horizon. I couldn't think of any reason to climb the tree. The window was locked. It was locked. Just my luck. I'd struck out again. The windows were all locked. The windows were all locked. I didn't have a flag on me, so the flagpole would have to stay bare. Nah, I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. Nah, I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. A large tree stood beside... I wasn't going to risk further laceration by the cat's claws. Hey, cat, want to play with this little doll? It wasn't exactly enthralled at coming face to face with the great god Tezcatlipoca. It was the flint statue of Tez... The flagpole had a reflective target on the end for Bronson to use as a reference point. It was a closed window. The window was locked. No, I couldn't just go around throwing things at other people's windows.
Did you see the weird sisters come by here? Did I? They look madder than usual, so I hide until they gone by. Just as well. They thought you were playing with Emily. Boy, were they steamed. Emily? You're madder than them. Can you let me have a fish, kid? I thought you said you don't like fish. It's not for me. It's a present. For the old ladies? Well, it makes a change from flowers and candy. No, it's for their cat. Okay. What do I get out of it? I can pay you. I've got Quaramontian dollars, French francs, and traveler's checks. You must be joking. The nearest bank is three islands away. Is this worm worth a fish? Could be good bait. How did it die? I think it drowned in tequila. Just like my Uncle Gabriel. Yeah, I'll have that. Okay, I'll get you a fish. It might take a while, though. Did you see the sisters go by? Yeah, they wanted to string that fisher brat up. Of course, uh, I told them where to find him. A fink as well as a creep. Nice. But he'd managed to vanish somehow. Catch you later, Bronson. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the boy. It was a seaworthy little craft, in bad need of a coat of paint, but spotlessly clean and maintained. I wasn't going anywhere in that boat without Rio to sail her. No luck with the fish? No, man. They don't want bite. That's cause they know there's a storm brewing. Storm? I don't think so. Hey! I got a bite! You have? It's a big one! A real big one! Reel him in, Rio. Jeez, that must be a whale or something. Rustiest whale I ever see. I still need a fish, Rio. Okay, make me try again. Maybe you better change your bait. The only serviceable part of the bicycle's wreck was a rubber inner tube. You just never know when you're going to need stuff like that. There's a fish, my man. I can't put it in my pocket while it's flapping about like that. No problem.
Okay, cat. You don't deserve this, but here's a little fish. The little monster ate the fish, but never strayed far from the ball. Maybe I had a future as a surrealist artist. Dizzy fish, my man. The fish was wet and slimy and decidedly dead. That should get the old cat dancing. I just hoped it didn't give itself a cardiac. A cute little putty tat. Actually, no. It was a mangy old flea bag. I wasn't going to risk further laceration by the cat's claws. I put the ball in the catapult, took aim, yes! Okay, so it was a lucky shot, but I'd knocked the theodolite target clean off the end of the flagpole. What the hell's going on here? Hi, Bronson. Nice to see you, too. You again. Have you been screwing around with my theodolite target? Where is it? I had to climb out of the window to put that one on. Damn it, I'm gonna have to go through all that again. Not this time. The house is locked up and the sisters aren't here. Hell's teeth! I'll have to put the spare target on the other flagpole. A whole morning's work wasted. I'm gonna fix all this, and then I'm gonna fix you, you hear? Yeah? Fine. I'll be waiting.
What you doing, Bronson? Just hanging around? I'm gonna kill you for this, Stobart! Get me down from here! What, so you can kill me? Gee, you talked me out of it, Bronson. I felt a little guilty about leading Bronson up there, but not much, obviously. The marker was a bright, shiny thing, and I have a weakness for bright, shiny things. It wasn't going to be much use without the theodolite, though. With Bronson out of the way, I could finally get a clear look at the plans. Engineers' drawings didn't mean much to me, but one thing was clear. These plans were for a five-story, 200-roomed, luxury, pirate-themed hotel. Another stain on the bedspread of paradise. Look here, Bronson's plans. Was I right? Is that creep up to no good? Darn right he is. You there! Why is Mr. Bronson hanging from that flagpole? He climbed up there of his own accord. Then help him, you stupid man! Quickly, before he falls! Here, Bronson's plans. This means nothing to me. She's not wearing her reading glasses. Ah, wait. Yes, I see now. I see it all too clearly. That man is planning to build a huge hotel. Bronson is a confidence trickster. Mina, we have been duped. I'm glad we didn't sign his contract. Oh, I hate tricksters, especially confident ones. Come, Mina. Mr. Bronson, you may consider yourself persona non grata. Yes. Grave canum. Kindly disentangle yourself from our flagpole and eject yourself from our property this very minute. Disentangle. Eject. Hey, cut that out, you crazy old bat. How dare you? Mina isn't crazy. She's just engagingly eccentric. Yeah, as a bedbug. Ouch! Lovely as this little vista is, I'd be really grateful if you could let me into the museum now. Certainly, young man. We are most grateful to you for exposing this scoundrel, Mina the Lock. Thanks, ladies. Stobart, be a pal. Get these harpies off me. Ooh, 